All right, YouTube. YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. Talking Auburn football, go ahead and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. Also, we have memberships available. And also, you can make some donations to the cash app that I will display in the description. Um, got some breaking news, though. Uh, like the video, comment, and subscribe. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger War Eagle. And we have to understand, with the transfer portal being as prevalent as it is now, that you got to expect some guys to hit the portal, you know. And that's just is what it is. That doesn't mean your program is bad. Kids do it all the time. It's a, a pretty viable option for them. We, we look at guys like, um, you know, Malik Willis, who went to Liberty and has found a greener pastures at Liberty than what he did at Auburn. And then you got Kobe Hudson and other guys who've gone to the transfer portal to go to situations that are a little bit more comfortable to him. You know, Kobe Hudson was actually recruited by Gus Malzahn. Demetrius Davis recruited by Gus Malzahn. These are not Brian Harson's guys. And just lately, we've gotten news that Demetrius, Demetrius Davis is hitting the transfer portal. That doesn't surprise me at all. Auburn was very aggressive in their pursuit of quarterbacks in the transfer portal, including Zach Calzada from Texas A&M, Robbie Osford from Oregon, and T.J. Finley, who's still there, and then the big recruit, Holden Grenier, who is now in the quarterback room at Auburn. What does this say? Uh, I don't think it says like a whole lot. I, I, I think it kind of speaks what we kind of already thought. I told you guys in videos before, go ahead and give a shout out to all the Auburn fans out there, especially the subscribers that come through on a regular basis. I definitely appreciate your support, including Georgia fan that just won't go away. Love him to death, Danny Blackman. But anyway... Demetrius, Demetrius Davis, uh, out of North Shore High School in Houston, arguably one of the most productive football players in his recruiting class. One of the red flags for me was the fact that he wasn't heavily recruited in state. Um, I thought that he would have gone either to Houston or I think that, you know, that he got some offers. But if you're, you're one of the best quarterbacks in your state, I just coming to Auburn doesn't make sense to me. And this is not to knock his abilities or his approach to the football game, but I was just shocked when Auburn signed him, especially considering the impact that he had on the state of Texas with, you know, leading North Shore High School to state championships and things like that, breaking records and all of those things. You know, he wasn't to be that kind of player in the state of Texas and not being as highly rated as he was, it was kind of a red flag to me. Um, he didn't play at all last year. Now, I do think under Gus Malzahn, he would have gotten a shot. I think Gus Malzahn and his staff really liked him. I think he really fell in love with the Auburn culture, but with where Brian Harson is per, you know, potentially taking his program and with the types of quarterbacks that Brian Harson tends to gravitate towards. I just didn't something in my and my gut is usually right. Just like when I covered this freaking Auburn versus Miami basketball game. Something didn't sit well with me with that game. Matter of fact, that game reminded me of I remember we were in a camp uh, at Auburn when I was playing for Notasoga High School, that year, we, we had one of the better teams in Alabama in the 1A class. But we played this team from Florida, and my God, they were so fast. The guard play was absolutely amazing, and they drug us on the court. And we were a good basketball team, but that type of play, I just didn't feel comfortable that Auburn, I, I didn't think Auburn would lose, but I thought this was a game to really look at. Because usually when you talk about the NCAA tournament, those seven, six to about 11 seeded teams are the teams that you got to be afraid of in that second round. Um, it's too bad that Auburn didn't get the first round 
I mean, didn't get the first, the number one seed to where they could have potentially dodged the team like Miami. But Miami was a dangerous team. I thought they made a lot of noise in the NCAA, not the NCAA, but the ACC tournament. Had a shot. If you look at wins and losses, they could have actually won the conference. Um, and so things would have gone their way during the season. Now, back to Demetrius Davis. You know, the quarterback room is full. The quarterback room is full of a lot of experience, especially you got Zach Zell, uh, Calzada coming in. A guy that led Texas A&M in a heroic fashion over Alabama. You also have T.J. Finley that has a thorough amount of of experience NCAA wise, you know, played at LSU, played at Auburn, played in some key games, um, led Auburn to some, some moments that he didn't quite finish off. Of course, we remember the historic performance against Georgia state, but this should not come as a shock to anyone. I know the fans are going to flood, you know, Auburn's got the dumpster fire. Go Players are going to transfer guys. And you got a full quarterback room and you got a quarterback that wants the opportunity to display his talent. And it just so happened that Auburn won that place. All right, let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about the potential destination that Demetrius Davis will go. Like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle.